Unit 1, A New Proposal. Come in. Gosh, today has been a really busy day. How about you, James? How's your day been? Well, I'm a bit busy also. I'm just now finishing these financial reports. I'm looking forward to a nice cup of hot coffee. Well, how would you like to hear about my new business proposal? Are you interested or not? Okay, let's hear it then. But don't take too long. I'm busy with these reports. Hey, if you don't want to hear about it, that's okay. I don't have to tell you. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I was just joking. All right. Please tell me. I'm really interested now. Well, I've been thinking about it for a long time, and I think it could be really profitable to start exporting paper bags to China. Exporting paper bags to China? I think you need to elaborate. Well, although they have an oversupply of production facilities, one thing they do have is a shortage of paper bags. I don't believe it. How come? Well, since they retooled their factories for plastic bag, they've been experiencing a serious shortage of paper bags. And you think we can exploit the situation? I don't see why not. It sounds like a good opportunity to make some serious money as long as we act quickly. Unit 2. Alternatives. Exporting paper bags to China. Hmm. I'm not sure. It sounds too risky. How much investment would you need? Well, I did some financial calculations earlier, and I reckon that I need 500,000 American dollars for the packaging facility and another 250,000 American dollars for the marketing. Does that include your expenses and overheads? Packaging factories are very expensive to set up and maintain. Yes, I know. I figure I can save money by using our existing facilities and retraining the staff. Oh, no. You're not saying what I think you're saying. That's right, James. I'm thinking of giving up the printing business and trying something new. Why? Things are going so well now. Profits are growing every year. We're the number one firm in town. Why should we change? I just feel like we've become complacent in our lives, and we need a new challenge. I think it would be a lot of fun. Okay. Oh. Before you close everything down, have you thought about the alternatives? Well, can you think of a better solution? Because I think this is an opportunity that we definitely should not miss. How about this? We borrow the money from the bank, and we set up a brand new facility. Go on. That way, we don't have to directly risk our existing business. And if things don't work out, well, then we have something to fall back on. Okay. Sounds like a better idea. Well, why don't you work on the new numbers, and we'll discuss it tomorrow morning. I agree. There has to be another way. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow morning with the new numbers. Okay. Unit 3. What's on the agenda? Good morning, Mr. Stewart. Oh, good morning, Anna. What's on the agenda for today? Well, this morning you have a meeting with James. Right. Has he come to the office yet? No, but he called. He said he'll be here by 10. That's fine. And what else is going on today? CS Computer have called, and the new Macintosh have already arrived. Outstanding! That's good news. The Chinese Chamber of Commerce have faxed us a list of importers and distributors of packaging materials. Well done! And here is the information from the Department of Trade regarding quotas and restrictions for the export of paper bags. My goodness, those people have rules for everything. At 11.30, a salesman from Office Max would like to meet with you. About what? Oh, it's about office supplies and furniture.
I don't want to meet with that guy, Anna. Um, could you take care of that for me, please? Sure, I can meet with him. Thanks, Anna. I give you full authority to make any purchase decisions. It's all up to you. I trust you. Right, can do. Oh, finally, Forbes magazine called. They would like to interview you for a feature article. Really? That's interesting. Well, schedule them for a lunch next Friday. I already have, Mr. Stewart. Thank you, Anna. I don't know what I would do without you. Well, that's why you paid me the big bucks, Mr. Stewart. Unit 4. Making a Query. Those numbers can be tricky. Do you want some help? For me, ratios and percentages cause nothing but headaches and confusion. That's tough, but I've done this a few times before. If you'd like, you can double check all of my calculations. Well, okay. I better take a look because I don't want to make any mistakes and waste time on this. Plus, I want to have a better understanding of all the costs involved. Okay, well, take a look at what I have. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask. Okay, thanks. Hey, James, I have a question for you. You've entered the legal charges under the fixed cost heading. Uh, yes, so I have. <laughs> Are you sure that's correct? Shouldn't that be a variable cost? Technically speaking, Yes, it should be a variable cost. Well, would you like to explain it to me? You may not agree. Well, I don't care. I want you to explain it. This is important. Okay. By entering certain charges as fixed costs as opposed to variable costs, then we can make a bigger deduction in our income tax statements for the first year. Wait a minute, is this legal? Strictly speaking, no, this is not legal. What? Should I remind you that we are businessmen and not politicians? We should be doing everything by the book. Well, we aren't actually breaking any laws. All I did was just follow common accounting practices. Everybody does it this way. James, I'm not sure I like the sound of this. Unit 5. Getting Help. James, I'd like to ask you a question. Sure thing. What? What do you think if we bring in somebody from outside the company to help with the figures? What do you mean? Well, both of us are going to be very busy with the many details of setting up a new factory. Right. And I think it's okay for both of us to admit that working with numbers is not our strong point. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Given that you and I have neither the experience or the expertise for number crunching, wouldn't you agree that it makes sense for both of us to hire an outside consultant to help with the numbers? I agree. Your reasons are solid. I'm happy you agree. Can you think of anyone who may be qualified for the position? Yes, actually. How about Sue? Sue? Which Sue? Sue Strobel, the financial consultant. The woman who prepares our corporate taxes every year. Right, of course. Sue. Well, she's a genius with numbers. Well, why don't we call her to see if she's available? Well, I'm not sure. As a consultant, she works on a freelance basis. Okay. I'll have Anna call her to set up a meeting to see if she's available and interested in this project. Unit 6. Making an appointment. Anna, please set up an appointment with Sue Strobel, the financial consultant. I'd like to meet with her as soon as possible. 
Right away, Mr. Stewart. This is Sue Straubel. Hi, Sue. This is Anna Baker of Impressa Printing Calling. Hi, Anna. How are you? Couldn't be better, thanks. And yourself? Peachy. This is my slow season for work, so I don't have much to do. I'm just taking things easy. What's on your mind? Well, Dave Stewart has asked me to set up an appointment with you at your earliest convenience. Really? And what would this be about? Well, Dave and James are working on a new project. They'd like you to go double-check their figures in accounting. Hmm. Neither of those guys are good with numbers. <laughs> Don't I know it. And you know, Sue? Yes. Well, you didn't hear this from me, but I think that Dave may ask you to be a full-time consultant for this project. Really? That would be great. Okay, I am free tomorrow. Anytime is fine. How about meeting here at um, 3 p.m.? Perfect. See you then. See you. Bye-bye. Unit 7. Shall we go for lunch? Do you want to go for lunch? Yes. I am so hungry I could eat a horse. A horse, you say? Well, why don't we go for French food then? I was only joking. So what do you fancy? Well, we can either go for Thai, Italian, or Chinese. <sighs> Whichever one is cheapest and the quickest, because I want to get back here and finish this paperwork before the end of today. Well, the Thai restaurant is always the cheapest, but sometimes the food's slow. And the Italian restaurant has a good set menu, but it's about 30% more expensive. And what about the Chinese? Oh, you know the Chinese. We always regret it every time we go there because we always eat too much. <sighs> so many choices. What do you reckon? Well, I'd quite like to go for Italian. Why? We just had Italian last week. Well, I'm in the mood for pizza today. Okay, then. So shall you drive or I? Well, I think I'll drive. Your route decision-making really scares me. So are you going to park? Well, hopefully we'll be able to park outside the restaurant. We'll have to wait and see until we get there. Okay, let's go. Unit 8. Weighing up the options. James, we have to make some important decisions regarding the location of the new plant. I know. I was just thinking about that this morning. Now, we can place it either near to the airport for fast air freight links or near to the river for access to the ports and the sea. Well, in your opinion, what are the benefits of each? Well, if we're by the airport, then we can obviously use the air freight services and our response time and delivery speeds will be very impressive. What if we establish ourselves by the water? Well, our response times and delivery speeds will be slower, but we will be able to deliver a much larger quantity of goods at a much cheaper price. That's right. Not to mention that real estate by the water is much more realistically priced. I don't think we could afford a large warehouse by the airport. What I thought might be a good idea was to set up the main facility near the river and then a small office and storage facility near to the airport. Good idea. That way we can still ship products by the air and we have the option of expanding in the future in that direction if there's enough demand. Why don't we get the bill? I want to get back to the office and make some phone calls. Whose turn is it to pay? I forgot. Well, how about this? Either you pay for lunch or for dinner tonight. The choice is yours. I'll pay for dinner tonight, and you can take care of this. Done deal. Unit 9. 
check this before we go, will you? Hey, James, uh, what day did we say we were going to the bookstore? I think I told you that we would go together on Tuesday. Okay, thanks for reminding me. I nearly forgot. <laughs> you do realize that today is Tuesday. Are you still free to go to the bookstore with me? Yeah, sure. I'm ready to go. I just needed to check with you to see when we planned to go. That's all. Before we go, though, I need you to clarify these numbers with me. Okay. Have a look at the third column and tell me if you think the export estimate is right. Yes, they are. They seem to be correct. Uh, if we are expecting a 20% increase in export volume from 200,000 tons a year, then your calculation of 240,000 tons a year is right on. Okay, I thought so. I just wanted you to have a look at it to make sure that I hadn't made any mistakes. Um, can you take a look at the car allowance also? Yeah. These look good, too. Let's see. If we have seven managers and the allowance is $15,000 a year, and your calculation of $105,000 a year is right? Okay. One last one for you. Our total company social contribution is 1% of our net profit. That's right. Do you think we should increase it? I think there's no need for that. Okay. Hey, are you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Maybe I'm just a little bit tired. All these numbers are making me feel very confused. I'm really afraid that I might make some errors. You do look a little pale. Why don't you go take a rest while I meet with Sue? That would be a good idea. Then, if this meeting goes well, we won't have to worry about working with numbers so much. And we can focus on more important things. That would be so nice. <laughs> Unit 10. Meetings. Hello, Mr. Stewart. Hi, Sue. Thank you so much for coming on such short notice. Thank you. Please sit. You usually only call for my services during task time, so I figure it must be important. Actually, it is kind of important. Very important, really. Really? What is it you would like me to do? Well, I would like you to look over these calculations that James and I have prepared and let me know if you think there's anything that's wrong or that you're unsure of. Would you like me to just look over these figures or actually recalculate everything by myself? If it's not too much trouble, could you also make your own calculations? I think that would be a much more thorough way of doing things, don't you? And also a lot more time-consuming. Time-consuming, yes. So, let me tell you what I would like you to do. Look over these, and I think that you'll be able to figure out what we're up to. Yes, and then? And then, if you're interested and available, I'd like to hire you as the financial consultant for this project. So, in other words, you would like to offer me a job? That's right, if you'd like. What is it that you are doing, or is it a secret? No, it's no secret. We're going to expand our business. Is that so? Yes, that's right. Paper bags. Paper bags? Paper bags. To China. Paper bags to China? Hmm, sounds interesting. Okay, count me in. Unit 11 Offering Possibilities. Wake up! 
I am awake. What time is it? It's dinner time. Hey, I've got some good news and some bad news for you. Give me the good news first. Okay. Sue is going to join our team. Oh, that is great. What's the bad news? So the bad news is I'm taking her out to dinner to celebrate her joining our team. I thought you and I were supposed to go shopping. Well, I'm sorry, but something else has come up and, well, it's late now. Besides, we can go shopping tomorrow. I suppose so. Are you expecting me to have dinner with you guys? Oh, only if you feel like it. Um, otherwise, you can go home or you can stay here and work on the new proposal. Maybe I'll just stay here and work. Because there's a lot to be finalized before we can meet with our bank next week. Okay. Um, do you want me to bring you anything to eat? Uh, good idea. Maybe just a hamburger and some french fries. Okay. Would you like cheese on that? No thanks. And no mayonnaise either. I hate that stuff. Unit 12. Planning an important meeting. So, uh, who from the bank are we supposed to be meeting with? Well, either Mr. Jones, the bank manager, or Mr. Smith, the bank chairman. Well, who do you think we can get a better deal with? Do you remember the last time we met with them? Yes. Mr. Jones gave us a $500,000 loan, and then the chairman tempted us in later with a $600,000 loan and a 20% overdraft facility. That's right. So why not just make an appointment with Mr. Smith then? Because Jones says that Smith is out of the country and he doesn't know when to be back. It seems as though Mr. Jones is intent on making things difficult for us. It seems so. Well, we may need to take our business elsewhere. I'm already one step ahead of you. I've already begun contacting other banks. Good job. Find out what you can about foreign banks, too. Maybe I should join you and Sue for dinner. We could discuss this whole banking matter more. Okay, but this is a social dinner to welcome Sue, not a business dinner. All work and no play is not a balanced lifestyle, James. Perhaps I'd better stay here and work then. Up to you. Work or relax. You can stay here or go out to dinner as you like. Unit 13. Expressing a wish. Oh, I wish it was Friday. Why do you wish that? Because Friday is my favorite day. It's the day before the weekend and that means I can relax. Out of all the things in the world to wish for, you wish it could be Friday? Yeah, sure. What would you wish for? Uh, have you ever heard of the saying, if wishes were horses, then beggars would ride? That old saying? <laughs> My father used to tell that to me all the time. In fact, my grandfather used to say to my father all the time. Those are words of wisdom. Let me tell you, James, I don't wish for anything. You don't? No, I don't. I set goals for myself. And then I do whatever I have to to achieve that goal. Whoa. Yeah, whoa, James. I don't wish for things that I can't have. I set goals, goals for anything, and in that way, I can achieve anything I want. Well, that's deep. 
So ask yourself, James, would you rather have wishes that may never come true or set goals for yourself that you can achieve? Hmm. I like your way of thinking. Hey, by the way, did you contact our bank manager? Yes, I did. And I told him that we would like to arrange a meeting with the bank chairman. Now, I hope he didn't seem upset that we were going around him. Did he seem okay? He probably wasn't expecting this. I don't think he was overly surprised. I just hope he doesn't try to block our meeting with the chairman. Yes, I agree. I hope he doesn't try anything funny with us. I really need this meeting to go forward. Unit 14. Trying to arrange the meeting. Hello? Hello, Mr. Brown. Thomas Jones of Lloyd's Bank is holding for you on line three. Thank you, Anna. <clears throat> Hello, James Brown speaking. Hello, Mr. Brown. This is Thomas Jones calling from Floyd's Bank. How are you today? Well, hello, Mr. Jones. How nice of you to call. Have you managed to arrange a meeting with uh, Mr. Smith for us yet? Not yet. Making a meeting with Mr. Smith is easier said than done. Perhaps you'd find it more convenient to speak with me. Really? Hmm. You do know that we were really hoping to get in to see him before the end of the fiscal year. Yes, well, as you know, Mr. Smith is a very busy man. We are all very busy, running our own businesses, you know. So both Mr. Stewart and myself really hope that you will find a way to fit us in to Mr. Smith's very busy schedule. I fully understand how you feel, but I hope that you'd be as comfortable talking to me as you would with Mr. Smith if you could not see him. As I'm sure you are aware, Impressive Printing have been very good customers of your bank over the years. And as you know, we always strive to take care of our very best customers. Consequently, sometimes we would expect to be treated as loyal customers should be. Do you know Impressive Printing has done more than seven million dollars of business this year alone? You know, it'd be a real shame to have to take our business elsewhere. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Jones? Okay, I will liaise with Mr. Smith's secretary later this afternoon, and we'll see what we can come up with for you. You do that, Mr. Jones. It was so nice talking to you, and I expect to be hearing from you very soon. Good day, Mr. Brown. Unit 15. How was the phone call? Come in. Did you speak to Mr. Jones yet? Yeah, just got off the phone with him about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Don't tell me. He was difficult, wasn't he? Well, let's just say that I made myself perfectly clear to him on this matter. Did he get your point? We'll see. He's going to call again. What if he remains unable to help us? Oh, he's able to help us. The question is, does he want to help us? We can't really afford to waste too much time with him. What about the other banks? What have you found out about them? Well, Barclay and TSB know us by reputation, and they're both interested. Good. That's good.
They both said that we could make an appointment with them whenever it's convenient for us. Great. Well, I like that. And what have you found out about the foreign banks? Thanks. Well, I found this one bank called China Global. Ooh. They have offices in the United States, and they have programs to assist in the setup of new businesses. Really? That sounds promising. Have you scheduled an appointment with them? No, not yet. Do so. Make it for as soon as possible. Okay, done. I've never worked with a foreign bank before. There could be some very exciting opportunities here. Unit 16, Unplanned Departure. Okay, okay, thanks. Goodbye. Making plans for this weekend? Actually, yes. I have to go out of town for a funeral. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. My condolences on the departure of your loved one. She's a distant relative. I've only met her once or twice. She's my cousin's grandmother. Do you mind if I ask how she died? Old age. She was 97 years old. She was making cookies in the kitchen and she just kneeled over and died. 97 years old. How about that? She was living history. What a way to go, 97 and still had the energy to cook. I should be so lucky. Yeah, she remained active for her whole life. She didn't look a day over 75. How many days will you be gone? I'll only be gone for three days, but there's so much work to be done here. Don't worry about it. We'll cover for you till you return. It's only three days, Dave, and we'll just keep on keeping on until you get back. And if there's any emergency, we'll call you. Don't you even think about not going. You should pay your respects to your relative. Yeah. And I'm sure the whole family will be there, too. Yeah, that's true. There's nothing like a funeral or a marriage to bring people together. Unit 17. How are things? Good morning. Impress the printing. This is Anna Baker. Good morning, Anna. Mr. Stewart, how are things? I'm okay. Things here are going along well. How are things there? Going great. That's good. How did your meeting with the sales rep go? Very good. His prices for many things were quite reasonable, so I stocked up on office supplies. Like what? Well, you know, paper clips, staples, A4 paper, glue, those sort of things. Okay, good, good. And pants with our company logo, too. Oh, good. I like those. Hey, anything major going on in the office that I should know about? Nope, we're holding down the fort here for you. Great. Has James come in yet? Yes, he has. Could you transfer me to him? Of course. Thanks, Anna. Oh, one more thing. Yes? I'll be arriving tomorrow at 1.30 in the afternoon on United Airlines Flight 106. I'll have the driver waiting for you there. Great, thanks. Okay, pass me along to James now, please. See you tomorrow, Mr. Stewart. Goodbye. Unit 19, New Horizons. Dave, how was the funeral? Oh, pretty good, I suppose, as far as those things go. It's good to have you back, Dave. We missed you while you were gone. 
Yeah, right. I guess things have been pretty quiet around here without me. Not a chance of that. Things have been quite busy around here since you've left. Oh, that's what I like to hear. Now, let's get to work. James, Sue, how was the meeting this morning? Well, they made an interesting proposition. Summarize for me. Give me the quick version. Well, in a nutshell, they've matched Floyd's loan of 1.5 million, but with a minimal 1% interest rate. My goodness, that's too good to be true. What's the catch? The bank wants 10% ownership, and the factory has to be located in China. Have the factory in China? Sue, what do you think of that? The cost of setting up a new factory in China would be a fraction of the cost of setting one up here. Why is that? Labor, land and materials are all cheaper there and the government has tax-free economic zones. Huh? Why didn't we think of that? It's incredible that we didn't think of setting up the factory in China earlier. It seems so obvious now. Dave, what are you thinking? What am I thinking? I'm thinking if they don't speak English in China, you better begin practicing Mandarin. Ni hao ma means hello in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs>